thank everyone for coming out today for a very special announcement. We appreciate you coming out and uh, promise you won't be disappointed in this. So without uh, further ado, let me introduce the panel. First, uh, Bluefish Manager Willie Upshaw and Bluefish General Manager Ken Shepard. All right, well, thank you for joining us today for a truly exciting and historic announcement. Certainly, by far, the biggest in Bluefish baseball history, and quite arguably, one of the most prolific announcements in professional baseball in the last 25 years. <clears throat> On Monday, June 16th, the Bluefish will welcome one of the game's greatest players of all time to the Park City to wear the Bluefish home whites. He will take the reins and manage the Bridgeport Bluefish as current fish manager Willie Upshaw has agreed to move into a coach's role for that one game. <clears throat> the Atlantic League was created to be a league of second chances. Whether that opportunity was Ruben Sierra's, Scott Casimir's, or Willie Mo Pena's trip back to the major leagues, or Bridgeport's Brock Peterson's second chance at a first opportunity in the bigs. It's not just about the players. It's a second chance for coaches as well. From our own Willie Upshaw's ascent to the San Francisco Giants as a hitting coach after leading the 1999 Bluefish to its league championship, to Pat Osborne, former manager of the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs, and now in his first affiliated coaching job in the New York Yankees minor league system. In just under a minute, we'll have our new guest manager announce himself, but before we do, we'd like to cover some ground rules. Our guest will make a statement, we will then open the floor to questions. Please keep your questions brief as it will require uh, for us to, to repeat the question to him. At this time, I am very excited and very honored to introduce our special guest and manager of the Bluefish for Monday, June 16th. Thank you, thank you guys. And, uh... This is uh, this is this is Pete Rose, and I'm very excited about coming to uh, Bridgeport. Look forward to it. Being back on the field, watching these young players uh, try to earn an opportunity to uh, advance their baseball careers. It's always a pleasure to be around young players, veteran players, uh, and I enjoy it to be around young players, uh, eager players, hungry players. Uh, reminds me when I managed to live, I had all those young players come up through the organization and, and really work hard to try to become better players. And uh, if I can help one player become a better player on that Monday night, then I've accomplished something. Thank you very much, Pete. Now we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, Pete, you ask him how this all came about? Mm. It's, uh, Chris Ellsbury, Connecticut, <coughs> would like to know how this all came about, Pete. Well, uh, I, I, I've been to Miami Hall ballparks before in the past, and uh, uh, Mike McGuire, the gentleman who worked for me, just contacted me, uh, Ken Shepard, and, and they had some interest in it. And I must tell you that uh, we got uh, permission from uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, we have their blessing on, on uh, being at uh, Bridgeport, so uh, we want to thank them, too, for making this possible. And, and of course, uh, thank thank Kenny for giving me the opportunity. Does Does Pete know a lot about independent baseball? And what does he know about the Atlantic League? Uh, Chris Ellsbury, Connecticut Post, would like to know uh, your take on independent baseball and the Atlantic League. Well, there's a lot of ball players, and there's just not enough minor league teams, affiliates from major league teams, and independent baseball. There's been several. Guys that play independent baseball and get a crack at the big leagues. And uh, that's all independent baseball is. It's an opportunity. And if guys are smart, they'll take advantage of the opportunity, bust their chops, try to do well, try to help win, uh, represent the city, represent the ball club. And uh, you never know who's watching the game. And if you can impress something, you'll get a phone call. If you get a phone call, you can. Uh, go to double A or triple A, and the next step you know, you're in the big leagues. It's, it's happened before, it's going to happen in the future. What's it going to mean for, for Pete to be back on the field again? 
Rich, I'd like to make a post. I'd like to know what, what it's going to mean to you to be back on the field again. Um, well, it's always fun. It, it's always fun to be around young players. And, uh, I'm a coach third a couple of years, so I'm going to play against a foul ball down there at five times. And I can't get out of the way of <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a coach third with a glove on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I come over there, uh, I'll, of course, I'll meet with up and then talk over the ball club because I know he wants to win. We want to win. I want to win. And I want the players to want to win. And uh, that's the way I'll approach the game. I, I don't care if it's Bridgeport, uh, Connecticut, or Cincinnati for the World Series, or Philadelphia for the World Series. Your obligation to the fans is uh, to try to get a good product and try to win the game. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. How much do you miss being a part of the game? Robert right, Jello, can I compose? Uh, how much do you miss being a part of the game? Uh, I miss the competition of the game. Uh, I miss the, uh, the development of young players. Like I said, when I managed the Reds from 84 to 89, I actually saw about 34 players get their first hit. So uh, I believe in young players. I believe, I believe in their enthusiasm. Uh, eat veteran players too. You need the ingredient of both. And uh, I, I watch baseball every night. I watch two games at least every night, most of the time three. And of course, I'm a Reds fan who is struggling right now offensively, and, and I'm a more of a National League fan. I am an American League fan, but Toronto is playing really good right now. San Francisco has got the best record in baseball. I believe Oakland's got the second best record. Toronto's got the third best record. And you've got Detroit. So, uh, and I, you miss the competition. I don't miss the at bats. I don't miss the ground balls. I don't miss uh, trying to break up double plays, but I do miss the competition, <laughs> the daily competition to try to win the game. You know, I've been blessed, guys. Uh, I've played with a lot of great Hall of Famers. Every team I played on, whether it was Vince Morgan and Perez, or Schmidt and Carlton, or Dawson and Carter up in Montreal, or back home when I had uh, guys like O'Neill, Barry Larkin, and Chris Sabo. So I've always been around a lot of great players, and I've kind of developed what we would call a winning habit. There's only two there's only two habits you can have. Or two attitudes. Positive winning, positive negative, winning or losing. That's the way it is. He said that he got the blessing of Major League Baseball to do this. Does he look at this as a continuing of like maybe the thawing of the relationship between the two and does he hope one day this will help him get back towards being eligible for the Hall of Fame? Chris Ellsbury can make a post. Uh, since you got the blessing of Major League Baseball, do you see that uh, continuing down the line and uh, going into a better relationship? Well, I, you know, I, I, hope, I hope baseball understands that uh, I'm a good citizen, that I understand I made mistakes and I'm going on with my life. Uh, and they let me on the field last year in Cincinnati when we had the big, uh, big red machine reunion. And uh, they let me on the field several years ago when I had my anniversary for my uh, 4192 is. So, uh, you know, I'm a positive guy, guys. I'm a very positive player. I'm a very positive person about the game of baseball. As you know, you could, you could be, uh, last in the game of baseball over the last five, six, seven years because of what's going on in baseball. But I believe in the game. There's a lot of great young players, a lot of great, uh, young pitchers out there. And I'd rather talk about the positives of the game of baseball than the negatives. All right, I believe we're all set with questions. Uh, thank you very much, Pete. We appreciate you. You guys are easy. Well, thank you again, Pete. And we will see you on Monday, June 16th, here at the ballpark of Harvey Yard Bridgeport. Yeah, I think we're going to have. Uh, we're going to have a luncheon next day, I believe, uh, before we go to the ballpark. And, uh, and uh, I'm excited to watch Patty practice and, and talk to the skipper there and see what kind of personnel we got. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, it'll be a fun night, and uh, we'll make it fun for the fans. That's what it's all about, man. Entertaining the fans, giving them money for us. Excellent. Thank you again, Pete.